Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you might be. I am Nicole BC, and you, you and us have everything. everything. Hey there, friend. I am so excited to be back. By back, I just mean recording because it's been a minute. Uh, If you're just joining me for the first time, welcome. I tend to batch these. So I wait and I compile inspiration. I get to talk to different people kind of all around the world every week about building business. And I've been doing this, I guess, from a kind of unique perspective. I started off in the creative industries working with artists and then had a few creative businesses myself. I then ended up working for nonprofits, running nonprofits, running different people's businesses, contributing to, I think it's at the like last count, it's over 50 different businesses I have started, saved, or shuttered. And I continue to leverage this expertise by helping people take their dreams seriously. And if you've talked to me once, it's kind of the only thing that I talk about, right? And I always like wrestle especially with this format, because I know for a lot of people, it's very conversational. It's very personal. And it's like, for me, business is personal because I've, I've been my own boss and I've had my own businesses for over 20 years now. And it's like kind of what I live and breathe. I work with my friends. I work with my family. I've somehow managed to negotiate that. And in continually building something that I personally love, I wouldn't do it if I didn't love it. I work with people that I love. And that's not to mean like it's all love all the time. I've had some pretty wild (laughs) disillusions when it comes to partnerships and businesses and relationships and failures and all sorts of things that didn't go according to plan, right? But I've noticed some very common threads. And I believe to be successful moving forward, there are a few elements a few ingredients that will make your recipe, your experiment successful, pass the hypothesis, right? So if you're curious what new world business building even means, please listen. Listen up, listen till the end. We're, I'm going to go through it all. I've got about 10 commonalities, 10 things that I tend to see in the most successful businesses currently right now. And some of these businesses have been around for 20 years. Some of these businesses have not even been around for 20 months. This isn't about time any longer. This isn't about success in terms of monetary or sales. A lot of the old metrics that we used to decide, well, this is a good business or this is a great business they kind of don't apply anymore. And those are the kinds of things that I want to explore. But ultimately, and as per always, I want you to figure out what success means to you. I want you to define business for yourself. I've just got ideas here. You know everything. So I'm going to talk a lot. I have a feeling in my brain, this is going to be a super short episode because I've already talked about this so many times, but I think I'm probably going to get pretty into it as I start going. With that I mean, I don't have to say things are changing quicker than ever now, it seems. We're being exposed to more. We're being asked to do more. We're being asked to show up and participate in and be real and have work-life balance and be healthy and be woke. And it's overwhelming on the best of days. Between AI and digital currencies and social media becoming the home shopping network, business does not look like our mom or dads or caretakers or friends or whatever we grew up with, right? I dabble a lot in Web3 and crypto and I'm the CEO of a DAO. That's a whole nother episode, (laughs) but like crypto is about to pop off. I actually did want to kind of throw that in here. I'm going to be spending a lot of time with the course that I created called Conscious Crypto with Noah Lampert from Synchronicities. We're actually going to start hosting town halls. You can check out We'll post, I'll post some links in the show notes. I feel like I always tell everybody at the end of the episodes, hey, you should rate me and you should share this and you should, you know, engage on some level. But the thing is, I switched platforms recently and I have like no ratings. (laughs) I don't know if that's a platform thing or what, Uh, but there's always, there's always links and you can find me everywhere. Uh, Please sign up for the loop. That is my newsletter. I'm trying to be more personable, but like, 
I don't know. This is me, my friend. This is kind of as, this is, if you hang out with me on a Friday night, it is a Friday night. (laughs) This is what you're going to get. Okay. Okay. So I want to share my vision of the future for you. Whenever you are watching this, it is the beginning of 2024. And for most people, they're celebrating a new year. I recognize it's a new calendar year. That's about as much into that as I'm going to go to, but I used to love planning. And what I will say, I have a whole nother episode coming out on plans are meant to be broken. I, my ego loves planning and there is a certain need to create structure and stability and consistency. If for no other reason to manage expectations, depending on the size of business that you're in, it might just be a team of you. (laughs) You might have hundreds, if not thousands of people in order to coordinate with people on the space time continuum, you need like an X marks the spot, right? This is where plans come into play. But in new world businesses, we recognize a plan is as real and useful as it is in this moment. And it is, we are doing our best to coordinate each other and, and achieve a desired end goal in community with each other. And that is probably going to be pretty f- negotiable moving forward. So let's discover what it will take for you to invest in your dreams and finally take those goals, those ambitions, and those visions seriously. And I know it might feel like it is absolutely impossible to keep up with the changes. And I I don't actually even think that's what this is about. The goal is not to keep up. I, I joke around with my people, like if you got through everything on your to-do list, you either aren't trying to do what I'm trying to do, that's for dang sure, but like you're probably dead. <laughs> I mean, the goal... I think is to always have more and new and exciting and ambitious and potentially even like intimidating. If if you're familiar with that fear frequency at a certain point, point in growth, we kind of recognize like, I always say, if it's not scary, I'm probably not doing it. That's that, that, that's that stretch and that growth opportunity. And so the more of that on your to-do list, the better. Now, is it all going to get done? Absolutely not. So the more comfortable we get in understanding, that's not the goal any longer. That was old world business. You get through your to-do list. You have your productivity matrix. You have your Gantt chart. And there are triggers and to-dos. And everybody wraps it up with a neat bow. Now we're looking at adaptation and evolution and iteration and improvement over and over and over again. So I, I don't know, my friend. I I don't I don't... Like I've been trying to come up with my 2024 plans since third quarter 2023. And I remember I've spent probably the last week of every calendar year in the US, actually every calendar year everywhere. I I love planning. I can plan an entire year out. I can plan an entire year of content. I can plan an entire year of finances and income. I can do that across multiple businesses, multiple resources. Like I, if you're in human design, I got four left arrows. Like I am all about the strategy. But having worked with artists and creatives literally since I was 18 and in small businesses, I had to be adaptable. I had to dynamically perceive the various iterations and and timelines upon which like everything could roll out to be able to chop and change and bob and weave. And I think that's essentially what is being demanded of us. So if you're a little bit like me and you really need some structure and some predictability, go ahead, plan it. And if you're a little bit more like completely go with the flow, lateral thinking, creativity and chaos, embrace it. There is no right wrong anymore. I think that's going to be the first, the, like the, the foundation upon which new world business is built. There is no one right answer. There is no one right way. You have permission to absolutely do it your way. And you are the only one that's going to know, is this successful? Is this working? How do you build a structure if the ground keeps shifting or the builders keep lifting? Another wild evolutionary reality. I think most of my people who are leaders and founders and CEOs and creatives and visionaries and dream builders, (laughs) they can't keep the same people around them to save their lives. And old world business would have perceived that as a fault. We're doing something wrong. There's something wrong with them. There's something wrong with us. People don't have careers anymore. They have contracts. Leaders don't go from good to great. They have three-year profit and loss statements they need to deliver on to private equity firms. 
college degrees, office space, even work-life balance seem completely make-believe, probably more fantasy-like than your actual dreams in this business building. So again, like how the hell do you build this business when it seems like everybody is becoming an entrepreneur whilst also trying to juggle a traditional job in a crumbling corporate situation? (laughs) So I asked thousands of people across my audiences, and this includes clients of mine, this includes friends and family. I mean, if you haven't figured it out, pretty much everybody in my experience is, is grappling with this definition of what is business now and today. And whether they work in a business, they own a business, or they are building a business, the the one answer that came back was it's taking things seriously. So a lot of people hire me because they're not getting the results that they want, right? They've actually created a shitload of success, but for some reason it, it's not working for them anymore. They're ready to take their dreams seriously. They've envisioned a certain lifestyle or a certain way of leading or a certain ability and freedom and agency in their day-to-day where they get to like do what they want. That's why they became the boss, right? And they're not getting that. So they don't think they're taking things seriously enough. I also work with not as many anymore, but there's different, the anti-business school and my score mentorship is more targeted towards people who have yet really to begin or who have only just gotten started in terms of building out their, their dreams. And they don't think they're taking things seriously enough yet. And so I, it occurred to me that what if we, what if I, I redefined business as simply taking things seriously. It doesn't mean you have to make money. <laughs> it doesn't mean you have to work with people. Shit, it doesn't even mean other people need to engage in what you do. Like it's kind of, to me, just about building a structure, whatever that looks like for you and taking it seriously so that you feel good about what you're doing so that you are meeting your expectations when it comes to your definition of success. Now, a lot of people start businesses. uh, I've got all 10 fingers and 10 toes raised. If I had other appendages, they would be up in the air as well. I 1000% started working for myself because... (laughs) I'm an asshole. I I thought I was smarter and better than all of my bosses. And I just didn't understand why anybody was doing anything. And I have no brain to mouth filter, um, hashtag on spectrum. So I, I told everybody that all of the time. Why am I talking into this microphone right now? Because I feel compelled to share what's going on in my brain hole. And this is changing, but it hurts some people's feelings. (laughs) So I just don't understand why you asked me a question or why you tuned in to listen to me if you don't want to hear what I have to say. So we hate business. We hate old world business. We hate rules. We hate micromanaging. We hate control. We hate bullying. And I mean, it gets a lot worse. Maybe you're here because you hate money. You hate the business of business. You hate corporate culture or the systems. I mean, these answers are pretty obvious and we all have our worst offenders. Toxic bosses, unmanageable expectations, hideous commutes, vanilla cookie cutter culture where people just talk about culture all the time. But like the, like uh, does, you know, a beer pong tournament or a um, escape room does not culture make. <laughs> like, and, and honestly, it actually gets really, really, really harmful and damaging and it's making people sick. I, I, in fact, think it's probably doing a hell of a lot worse. I mean, the systemic racism, sexism, these physically dangerous workplaces, most of us feel like we are expected to show up at are intolerable. They cannot, you know, everyone's talking about like defund the police, like defund the, the old world businesses. The people that I get to work with, and I mean, if you look at me, if you listen to me, I obviously walk the walk. So people find me because they recognize I'm doing things a little bit differently. I'm showing up unlike other professional multiple business owners, you know, whatever income earning people that they have experienced. And they're wanting to build sustainable success that feels supportive for them. And that's going to be really different than how it feels for you. So why be a new world business builder? You might ask, because you get to do it your way. You get to be the lighthouse that guides the lost and the weary and the corporate refugees into shore. You can take your dreams seriously and you get to decide what that means. 
I truly believe this world can be different. And that's what's happening right now. That's why everything is crumbling. That's why it feels like the ground is shifting underneath you as you try to just take one small step ahead. And it's going to be shaky, my friend. One of the other reasons that I love small businesses and micro businesses and local businesses and our, and our neighborhood economies is that I feel like it's, it's a place where we can actually stake our claim and say, this is mine. And within these parameters, within these walls, whether they be physical or virtual, I get to do it how I want to do it. And if you have a problem with that, you just don't have to participate with this. So by building one small structure, you get to keep you safe. And that's how we start actually creating change. It's pretty challenging. I would argue impossible to actually create anything viable if it doesn't start with safety and security, if you don't feel like you have choice and agency in your experience. And that's why I am an advocate for new world business building is because <laughs> when you feel empowered to be you and to do it your way, like you will create the change that we want to see in this world. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm hearing <laughs> like, but what about everybody else? I don't have a lot of those people in my experience because I'm so committed to these 10 attributes of new world business building. Even when I experience Karen's and uh, t- <laughs> the C-bomb, I tried to drop the C-bomb and then I totally freaked out. I dropped the C-bomb regularly. It was way worse when I lived in Australia. Um, but yeah, they're like, cause I don't, they're, they're just, they're just like speed bumps on my freeway right now. And that that's one of the things I work with my people on it. I call it level six energy, but like their, their stuff just doesn't have to infiltrate your safe little secure world. And it takes practice. Don't get me wrong to get there. But if I told you just about the last 24 hours in my life, which involves driving a stolen car, a well running dry, not proverbial, actual, literal, physical, goddamn well with seven people who depend on it for water. Uh, Oh, and then getting essentially, I don't want to say I'm getting kicked out of where I'm living, but um, it's not working anymore. And like, I find it all comical at this point. It's like hilarious to me that, that all three of those fun things get to happen on the same day. Like, yeah, I get to knock them all out at once. Right. And not to make this about me or I don't know, maybe you do want to hear more about me. I'm excited about this topic. So I've got all of the radio stations playing in my head at the same time. It's really great. Let's tune into new world business building. I want to detail the 10 things that I think make a new world business. And let me just be clear. This isn't, you don't need all 10 of these things. Honestly, you could really just focus on one of them. If one of them resonates with you or jumps out at you, I encourage you to explore it. That's what I'm here for. Sign up for the loop. You can email me anytime. Hello at NicoleVZ.com. I often make entire episodes about questions that people ask or conversations that I find myself having in my day-to-day with all of the people that I get to work with. So first and foremost, partnership versus competition. I'm going to get into all of these. I'm just going to go through the list really quickly. So This is what I've noticed, the biggest differences, right? So new world business are obsessed with building partnerships. Old world business is obsessed with competition. New world business, quality. Old world business, quantity. New world business, loyalty. Old, leading stats. This property with the dried well, they sent me, oftentimes if you're an investor and a developer in property, you're looking at demographics and socioeconomic data around the area, right? And they sent me the census report from 2010. (laughs) Cool, man. That's really great. Thanks. Those stats would have been really useful probably to somebody. And in fact, I I did query a handful of my sort of advisors on the, the stats for this property. And they thought the census stats were great. I was like, oh, I didn't. I didn't even waste my time with those. But I'm glad that you approve 70 year old rich man. Intuition versus data. New world business is making decisions based on intuition, a feeling, a gut instinct, right? Experience plus wisdom. Old world business is is again using data. New world business is filtering. Old world business is focusing. New world business builds trust. Old world business is obsessed with popularity. New world business finds fragments. Old world business is interested in mass appeal. 
New is experimenting. Old is strategic. New is pivoting. And and I don't mean like you go from being a restaurant to making masks or <laughs> you go from being a digital marketing agency creative director to a residential real estate agent to a influencer home organizer. Although if those are all of your jam, you're awesome. We should be friends. I mean, pivoting in terms of like adapting your pricing, exploring a new customer base, getting into services or verticals that excite you. Last but not least, new world business is sustainable. Old world business is sacrificial. We leapfrog from like-minded people. And so one of the reasons I've noticed these 10 different qualities of new world business is that once I honed in on those, it became very, very easy to find my people. I can walk into a room and feel (laughs) who is a new world business builder and have a pretty amazing, powerful, impactful conversation that I'm actually going to be able to leverage at some point in the near future. I'm in a space right now that is filled well, I don't want to pass judgment, but let's just say I have filtered out the new world business builders and they've been amazing. So when you're trying to figure out how to build this business, take it more seriously, reevaluate your success metrics and scale to that next level, you're going to need to ask who with, right? And it's people that are going to share these interests are going to be curious about these opportunities. Because again, like this isn't happening across the board, right? Nor is someone embodying or leading or building an organization that has all 10 of these qualities. Some of them are going to be so much more relevant, but it's by really understanding what it is that inspires and challenges and excites you that you can like really, I think, kind of start playing with some of these paradigms. So this is also what's going to make you different. This is going to be why somebody buys from you, talks about you, refers people to you, wants to work for you, or potentially quits all of those activities because they don't fit into your matrix anymore, right? So first things first, and this, I also want to be clear, I don't, I think that new world business is prismatic. It is multifaceted. If I, when I talk about quality versus quantity, I don't just mean your, a quality product or service. I don't just mean a quality experience for your customer, client, or buyer. I don't just mean a quality workplace for your partners and teams and collaborators and um, stakeholders. I, and, and I do, I mean all of those things. So look at it from an angle that feels relevant to you in this moment. And perhaps you listen to this episode again and something different pops out at you. Quality can literally mean who your vendors are, who, what kind of cars your fleet is made up of, um, what kind of software or tech people are using. And, and I'm probably going to use those examples as we move through. Obviously, every business is different, but every business is different on the surface. I, I actually truly believe the fundamentals are pretty much the same. And what I've kind of gone through here are what I think are like the top 10 fundamentals for new world business. So your content, your products, your ex- which includes experience, service, knowledge, and tangible physical product, obviously. Your physical space, your tone of voice, your people, and I use the term stakeholder being anybody that's involved in your business. And I mean, that can be your friends and family. That can be the, the person who drops off your mailboxes and your deliveries. That can be the person that walks your dog so that you can stay at work after hours. So everybody's going to have their own tastes and preferences. All you need to focus on is high quality, what that means to you in this moment with what you're creating. So again, like I'm pretty fucking casual. I speak casually. I dress casually. I do not think that by wearing designer brands or showing up in some super fancy experience is going to impress you. Probably because that stuff doesn't impress me. I I look more to the leaders and CEOs that actually wear the exact same thing every day because they are so... They have to make so many decisions that impact so many people and drive so many profit lines. In fact, the way that they look or potentially the way that they talk isn't the most important thing in their day to day. So you might, well, you don't, (laughs) if you cared about designer brands and designer experiences, you, you wouldn't like me. So it's a filter. It's a fantastic filter for your people. 
And we perceive certain qualities as having a higher value, but again, to each their own. I was talking with somebody yesterday, somebody much younger than myself, and we were comparing um, come up stories in the music industry. And for this individual, being a bedroom producer and learning how to make music without anyone showing you how, without any fancy technology, like that was a badge of honor. And they would not think that you were high quality had you not come from that experience. I came from like old school world of like huge commercial studios where have you not used a Neumann ribbon microphone to mic up a 90, 98, 98 piece orchestra, 98 piece orchestra and a large symphonic hall. You don't know what the fuck you're doing, right? Like completely different uh, measurements and what's the word I'm looking for? Completely different ways of, of determining quality. And we're both right but you know what? Like he and I probably aren't going to be, I'm not going to be selling to him. He's know who your people are and your people will find you because you know who you are. And by really investing in quality, whatever that means to you, it might just mean like getting enough sleep, eating the right foods. It might mean, it might mean buying the right clothes or being in the right space. Like it doesn't matter. You get to define it for yourself. But recognize when you are looking to evolve, when you do feel like a change is needing to be made, look, exploring quality. Most of us have been brought up to prioritize quantity. The more you do, the more you know, the more um, accolades and validations you receive, the better. I think we can all we can all agree it doesn't matter how many followers you have on social media it doesn't matter how many sales you have or how much money you've made that does not prove your quality in this moment any longer it just doesn't that system is broken those metrics are meaningless now if you come from that world you might be looking for numbers of reviews. They're all bots, my friend. So again, like there is going to be a strong dissonance, a a huge divide between old world business and new world business. And I don't think you have to choose. I actually just think you need to kind of recognize the differences so that if you're focusing on building new world business, you're not spinning your wheels trying to get the attention of old world business believers. Loyalty versus leading stats. What do, what do I mean by that? And yeah, okay, I may have gotten like way too excited about the alliterations here. But what I mean is you know what's better, <laughs> best for you. And that is a hell of a lot more important than gaming the algorithm. Unless you want to be a social media influencer, you don't need to worry about gaming the algorithm. All you need to do is worry about loyalty, being loyal to the things that are most important to you, to your values, to your people, to wherever loyalty can show up to you. That's what I mean by this is prismatic. Maybe it's loyal to your schedule and your discipline and your plan. Maybe it's loyal to the creative chaos that you know is where your best ideas and inspiration come from. This is the challenge of new world business. There's no one here to tell you the one right way of doing things and how to do it. You get to be in charge. You are empowered to make your own decisions. And by being loyal to what is most important to you and what feels good to you in this moment... That's how you're going to make this happen. All of the stats, all of the data, when people, and I am an advocate for this, so do not, do not get me wrong about this. When we are using past historical data and stats to make decisions, that is letting old things tell us what to do in this moment. If you want more of the old way, absolutely do that. If you want to use that as a point of relativity and a, and a, and a leap of faith, a jump off point to go, okay, not that anymore. That's also very useful. But just simply recognize old world obsessed with old stats. They're using old sales numbers. They're using old customer data. They're using old projections to make decisions now. New world business is going, what feels most important to me in this moment? Am I willing to prioritize that above everything else? Am I being loyal to my values across the board right now? These, I, like, these might start to sound a little bit repetitive. And I just wanted to bring, I just wanted to say that because I was feeling a little bit weird about it. Your people are totally overwhelmed with information and you are too. So one of the things that I think these different qualities allow us to do is set the overwhelm to the side, just recognizing it's going to be there. There's going to be a ton of noise, a ton of experts, a ton of data and stats And this is how you start to navigate through 
that chaos to find your desired destination, your dream destination. So intuition versus data. Again, there's a ton of fucking information out there, but people don't buy from you because you know, their doctor told them to, or everybody says you're the best, or um, you have all of the millions of reviews. They buy because of how you make them feel. And they talk about you because of how you make them feel. And if you can address a need in a way that feels right, it's that like intuitive yes to some people. Firstly, you've differentiated yourself in your business. Like that is your proof in the pudding that you know what to do. And so, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to really pull this quality out is a lot of my people are very intuitive leaders. They just have a feeling and all of their advisors, all of their financials suggest otherwise but it's by learning how to be loyal to themselves, how to bet on themselves, how to prioritize whatever of these qualities or their values first, their intuition becomes an absolute compass towards success. And when you are hyper fixated on the way you want to feel or what that desired destination is going to look like, and you were unattached to the moment, that's how you bob in a weave. <laughs> that's how you build structure on the ever-changing ground is you just know what it feels like for you to move successfully closer to where you want to be. That's intuition, my friend. It shows up a little bit differently for each of us. So really kind of start to play with like what that sounds like and feels like and tastes like and smells like and looks like for you, because it might be all of those senses. Last thing I want to say about that is whether you're leaning into aspirational marketing, you're, you're selling people or you're selling something that will help people also feel like they've achieved something, or you're just like essentially competing on price. There's a million out there of the thing that you're offering, but yours is just quite simply the very best value. Intuition is going to be the thing that inspires people to go with you. And it's, 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 it's this feeling. And, and I think that's like another fundamental for new world business is it's very physical in its experience. And that's what I mean by feeling like your body is going to have a reaction, not just your head. I feel like I just need to add one more thing about that. So your body's going to have a reaction, not just your head. That's why old world business is making people sick. Their bodies are having physical reactions to it. And despite our head telling us, well, we need the job and we need the benefits and we need the structure and we need the predictability and, you know, we got to do this, that, and the other. If it's making you physically sick, I would ask at what cost, right? And, and so actually by taking you seriously, and that can mean just spending 15 minutes a day on implementing your dreams, even if it's just writing down for fun, what it might look like, what life might look like in 10 years, if, if you had act, if you did the thing that you're dreaming about, that is going to shift everything. And that is new world business building at its simplest and most immediate, my friend. So filtering versus focusing. Okay. That, that one, even when I was looking back at my notes, I was like, what the fuck did you mean when you wrote down that one, BZ? Besides an obnoxious alliteration. So again, you might be thinking about this from your buyers, customers, clients perspective. You might be thinking about this in terms of being a leader and an employer. You might be thinking about this in terms of what next and how do we evolve or pivot or change. It doesn't matter. I think these apply from whatever lens or angle that you're, you're looking at it. Filtering has a lot to do again with this overwhelm. I can't tell you, I mean, I'm pretty sure every single old world business advisor will tell you, you have to focus. You can only do one thing. Focus is the most underrated quality for success. Okay, cool. For all of those of us on spectrum, like, mm, yeah, focusing, it's just not how we're hardwired. So if I'm the first person to tell you, you get to do it all and you don't have to focus, like, I'm sorry, because you get to do it however you want. Now, I do believe in any one given moment, we can only do one thing. And depending on how your superpowers show up, deciding on what that one thing is has probably felt challenging. We're all here for a reason, right? <laughs> We're all distracting ourselves with the podcast in this moment. So again, New World Business is prismatic. It is multifaceted. There are a million different options and that can feel overwhelming and unfocused unless you have a filter. 
So your values are your first filter. I don't know how many episodes I've done about that, but find one of those. I'll link to some of those or potentially point you to one of them. I have like eight episodes I want to suggest after this. But when you know what's most important to you, that is your first filter. Does this feel excellent, adventurous, fun, and free? That's what I ask myself in any given moment. I look at my massive, overwhelming, insane to-do list that runs across five different businesses in three different states. And sometimes I just do the thing that jumps out at me or sometimes the thing jumps out at me like this morning when uh, people told me they had no water. Then suddenly I'm aligned with that activity. And I've been really exploring this like love and light term alignment. And it literally just means like, where does my attention, where does my, where does my filtering, like, where does, where does my energy want to go? Like, it's the thing that I'm like, yes, in this moment, despite everything else that's happening, that's the thing that I want to do. And that thing might feel like the most pointless thing. What's the word? Like non-profitable, like, like, there's been a lot of that going on in the last couple of months just because there's been a lot going on. And if I were to ask myself, is this the most productive thing I could be doing right now? The answer was no, but it felt like excellence, adventurous, fun, and free. So it was yes. We have our bias. And a lot of that is also built into our old programming. And so in building new world business, you're going to need to do things differently. And that can just mean thinking about it differently or feeling differently when we do it. I've used this example a lot as well, but like with bookkeeping, when I first started trying to pay attention to my finances, it felt like the hardest thing in the entire world to do. And I created so much resistance and struggle around doing my finances. It was so much work. But then I decided to be really excited that I got to pay my bills because that wasn't something I was always able to do. I got to be really excited that I had to pay taxes because that means you've made money. So we all have biases, 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 multiple bias, <laughs> cognitive bias. And all this means is that we are going to have preferential treatment to things that are familiar, things that we know how to do. Uh, places where we feel very confident. And unfortunately, to create growth, you're probably going to have to get pretty uncomfortable. And that is different than feeling unsafe. That's a whole nother episode. But when you have a filter, it's going to allow you to orient towards where you want to go. When you have a focus, you are suggesting that there is only one thing. That is the binary, my friend, this or that, othering. I mean, do I even need to get into how problematic that has been in our old world? So use filters to check yourself. Set parameters you can play in. Get messy. That's where creative chaos can thrive when it knows I have a safe space to get fucking weird. That is new world business building. So, you know, filter who gets your time and energy. Filter what thoughts and feelings get your attention, what you appreciate appreciates. So you are in charge of what you invest in, my friend. It can be your dreams and your growth and your business. And you can take all of that very seriously. It can also be getting a a day job or a retainer or building security. A lot of people that I'm working with right now, we've gone from very significant growth strategies to building safety and security on a dime. Like literally three weeks ago, we were talking about going tripling annual revenue. Now we're simply talking about maintaining uh, cash, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, operating expenses, right? Like that's, that's pivoting. That's recognizing like how do we adapt and evolve our new world business so that we are able to continue to sustainably scale Sustainably means safely, securely, and with all of your values in check. The last thing I want to say about filtering versus focus, and this is filtering in terms of using your own discernment, which is really important now more than ever, that there are thousands, if not millions of people out there telling you (laughs) different ways to think and act, right? There's someone who I look up to immensely, and I think they've built a pretty incredible ecosystem. And they've been posting a lot about focusing and how focusing is the most underrated skill and the most overpaid investment. And if you can focus, you will succeed. Now, this person 
also claims to have over 100 small businesses in their portfolio. They are an influencer with, I think, about a million people following them on just one platform. They are constantly speaking, constantly creating content. They spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on their social media. What does focus mean to them? They've got such a a 30,000 foot view over all of their different entities and focal points that I I would suggest it's their values. And I, I don't know what their values are, but I know when I run everything through my new world business umbrella, that is fun, adventure, excellence, and freedom, it's focused as fuck, right? Even though I'm doing 50 million different things and, and each day looks wildly different than the next. That is not unfocused. That is a filter. So fragments versus mass appeal. What I mean by that is, and I've been saying this since I was 16 years old, like we are not going to have celebrities, like super famous people anymore. We're not going to, like with this global economy, there isn't going to be a superpower. There's just too many of us. And like you can crawl online into some weird ass crevasse and find a thousand people that are obsessed with the same color on the same printer that you are. Like the level of community and weirdo out there is un believable. And I am here for it. If you are building towards mass appeal, TV stardom, celebrity, you are an old world business. I think I was going to, so I'm going to make a bold claim here, but even something like the Kardashian brand, like that name might be familiar, but I don't think, firstly, I know everybody doesn't like him. But secondly, I don't think everybody even gives a shit anymore. So by focusing, (laughs) see what I did there? Focusing on your fragment, but finding your fragments, finding the pieces that of, of this experience that you feel are like are appealing and expansive. And there's something there for you to learn. And there's different places within which you can play. I think that is going to be the way forward for new world business. It's it's not about trying to be appealing and gaming the algorithm and getting as many followers as possible. It's like most of the businesses, when I'm talking with all my people, and these are everywhere from like solopreneurs and creativepreneurs and artists, teams of one, to people who are scaling, you know, there there is not quite a thousand employees yet. We're working on plans towards that. They're at seven figures, not at eight yet. We're working towards that. So that that gives you some scope of the people who I'm talking to every single day, right? They would be sustainable with with 300 or less of their stakeholders. So whether that's their customers, clients, buyers, whether that is their existing team, like leadership and impactful change makers within their team, um, whether that's their friends and family, like we got really... I don't even know where this came from because I've never really operated like this. I just, I witness it. I can't say that I understand it. But it seemed like people became obsessed with numbers, that old quantity versus quality thing in terms of um, the stakeholders in our lives and businesses. But even the largest businesses that I've ever worked with, with hundreds and hundreds of employees, 20 plus locations, multiple millions and millions of dollars in gross annual revenue, like there was... 10 accounts, 10 facilities, 10 customers, clients, buyers that were their focal points. Everything else, like those 10 took up 80% of the gross revenue, gross profit. That's what I was talking about before. I I was right when I said net profit. Anywho, um, (laughs) being right, old world business, acknowledging differences or contradictions and having fun with it, new world business. That was a teachable moment brought to you by BZ. So the point being, you would be shocked at how little your space needs to be in order for you to create success that would absolutely fulfill your wildest fantasies. That was the last quality of those top 10 qualities for new world businesses that I wanted to really dig into. So you where to from here? Why does this matter? What am I supposed to do with this BC? Well, what I would say is if you're listening, I'm going to guess you're a new world business builder. So if one of those jumped out at you, think about that. Think how that could overlay across what you're doing. 
it's going to be different for each of you. I would love to hear. I would love to hear how this has impacted you because this is, I literally, you know, people are like, what do you do? And honestly, I don't answer that question because I think it's a dumb question. But if and when I am speaking with another new world business builder, I will drop, I am a new world business builder. I'm a 21st century CEO. That's what I mean is that I am working with people who are embracing these qualities because if you aren't, we're probably not in connection with each other. Oh my God, I totally lied. There's so many more. Okay, so experiment versus strategy. <laughs> See, we're just rolling at the punches. New world business building. Uh, experiment versus strategy. That one's pretty obvious. I talk about that one a lot. No longer are we creating five-year plans. I mean, you can create a five-year plan. Don't get me wrong. But we recognize this is an experiment. We are setting these targets not because they will be our metrics of success or failure, but so that we can learn, iterate, improve, and try again. Once you figure out a model that can work, I'm working, this is, this is how I work with um, people that are scaling at a large revenue and large employee base. They're going from like small to medium-sized business. Once you create a system that works for you, you rinse, wash, repeat. One of my clients supports really big national and international franchises and their, you know, hundred million dollar revenue business owners, they own multiple businesses and different verticals. So different types of businesses and they just rinse, wash, repeat. They take, they literally take a business plan. They fill in some of the quantitative data. They fill in the blanks basically. And then they just put, they just buy another business and, and plug that business into their system. That's a strategy. And then they recognize this is going to adapt and change based on where it is, based on the pricing, based on the services and the products that they sell, so on and so forth. But it is an experiment. It is not something we set and forget. That is old world business. Old world business is using that old data to talk about what we're doing now. New world business is going, I think this is what's going to happen. We need to check in on that regularly. I recognize we had a contract or an agreement, or a job description, or any of the different things that old world business used to lock things in place, new world business recognizes, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we want to keep doing this at this price for this amount of time and with this level of exchange. But let's make sure that we're checking in regularly, especially when we first start this out to make sure it works. This ensures you do get the highest quality going back to our first point over and over again. This means we are not going to stick around with things that don't make sense any longer, that don't, don't prove the hypothesis true. And what's been really interesting is working with my people on this. As an employer, old world business would define success by people want to keep working with you. No, like the length of time that people commit to things any longer doesn't necessarily mean success. It, what it means is value alignment. And that's fantastic. But as soon as you, you pivot, as soon as you adapt and change, because the ground has shifted, some people, some resources, some strategies aren't going to fit anymore. That's awesome. That's what this experiment is all about. It's going, oh shit, we set that target. It doesn't make any sense anymore. We're going to move it closer, further away, to the left, to the right. Doesn't mean we failed. Just means that we are continually evolving. You get the best people. You get the best resources. You get the best when you are willing to embody new world business building. And the best gets to be defined by you, not by me, not by that guy over there, right? You get to scale sustainably because you are focusing on your values. And there is no other way to be successful than by sustainably growing and getting closer to your desired destination. When you were absolutely focused on where you're going, it honestly doesn't matter what you're doing in this moment because you, every decision you make, everything you do is going to support that directional momentum towards your dreams. So by embodying new world business building, you are sustaining and scaling because it's not about what goes in, it's about what comes out. And this kind of goes back to the very first point of quality versus quantity. This isn't about productivity. This isn't about the more we do. This is about mastery. And mastery is not precious. Mastery isn't saying, I know what to do. I have the best way. I have a proven system and strategy that works for me. Mastery is going, I'm going to just try again over and over. I mean, I think it was Malcolm Gladwell with Outliers that defined mastery as 10,000 hours or more. 
that's not 10,000 hours of success. That's some success. That's just 10,000 hours of giving it a go, of taking your dreams seriously. So here's the purposeful profit and the last point, because uh, it got wild there for a second, my friend. Purposeful profit is not just about money. This means that what you get out, how you learn to use your resources, whether it's people, whether it's finances, whether it's time, whether it is your own ability to give back and to serve, you are now working alongside trust and intuition and adaptation in your own environment and community. So it becomes this synergistic relationship. It's synarchy, right? And when you can be that ripple that becomes a wave, that is how we change this world. You are literally creating a culture of learning and growth individually for you. That will be, I was going to say mirrored, that will be felt amongst those around you. And I kind of referred to this in terms of that level six energy. When someone else's old world bullshit doesn't get to you any longer, they will see how you be living. And they might not want to participate. They might be very perfectly happy in their old world programming. And that's totally fine for them. You're not trying to convince them. And they're going to get to keep doing their thing over there. Meanwhile, we are going to be here actually creating this new world. Very, very busy taking our dreams seriously. And that's how we create the change, my friend. So I think I got there. Thank you. <laughs> following my breadcrumbs because I threw them all over the place. <laughs> but you know where to find me. Hello at NicoleVZ.com. Do also, because I think this 2024, whenever you're listening to this, this is the beginning of 2024. Bitcoin ETFs are about to get approved. There's going to be the happening. If you don't know what that means, please join me. Um, and it's actually Noah Lampert's Synchronicity Discord. You can get a link for that on his Patreon. You can find Conscious Crypto on my website. So NicoleBZ.com forward slash Conscious Crypto. That's where the course is. If you have any questions, please, please, please ask. Oh, and yeah, share, like, please review. <laughs> I have no reviews anymore. I don't know what happened. Uh, well, I do know what happened. We swapped platforms. I just didn't, it didn't occur to me that all my reviews go. Anywho, that's all I got. Thank you for joining me. If you're new, thank you for being here. And if you old, you're just like me. <laughs> old as fuck.